Hello and welcome to the interview of France 24. Our guest today is live from Washington, the Secretary General of the Organization of American States, Mr. Luis Amagro. Welcome. Hello. I'm very happy to be with you today. It's a pleasure to be able to speak with you. Mr. Malgro, let me begin with the caravan of immigrants who've left Honduras heading for the United States. Uh, what do you think of this development and what do you think of the reaction of countries in the region of the United States? First of all, let me tell you that uh, immigration from Central America has been a source of concern to us right from uh, the very beginning of our term within the organization and even before that. And uh, we've also invested quite significantly so as to reverse uh, the structural causes of this uh, immigration. Obviously, migrants are now traveling in a more secured environment when they travel together, but this also has uh, uh, somewhat negative collateral uh, uh, impacts and turning this into a political event, for instance, and uh, crossing the borders is now less invisible and is more of a political issue. The uh, politics in Mexico and Guatemala, as we get closer to the United States, well, I mean, as a result, we're quite concerned by immigrants' security, uh, and this is uh, the objective. We need to comply with their freedom and their rights. Having said that, we also need to comply with immigration regulations in each one of those countries, and the migratory issue sh should not be turned into a political issue. It is undoubtedly a need or a response to people's need, uh, and as a result, we need to face up to those needs within the, the right uh, legal framework, uh, which really is, uh, uh, revolves around the immigration issue. We need to come up with solutions, and those solutions should be uh, related to uh, poverty, security, uh, structural causes, but we also need to be custodians for the right working conditions in uh, the places of origin of those people. And so far as the destination and transit, those issues need to be solved uh, depending on those countries' immigration regulations. Mr. Amagra, let's now turn to Venezuela. A lot has been said about Venezuela. Last month, six countries of the region requested the International Criminal Court to mount an investigation, an investigation addressing possible crimes against humanity by the government of Nicolas Maduro. This has been supported by Costa Rica and France. It will no doubt be difficult for the International Criminal Court to mount an investigation because there will probably be opposition in the UN Security Council by Russia and China. Why are you in favor of this? You know, uh, we took on this uh, initiative over a year ago. In June and July of last year, we started uh, collecting complaints, testimonies from people that had been tortured or whose relatives had been murdered or taken uh, in as prisoner, uh, political prisoners. And those uh, testimonies were lumped together in a more than 400-page report within the organization. And this report, which all the six countries are referring to, uh, including those countries that supported the complaints, as far as we're concerned, the situation has to be clear. The ICC is the very last uh, legal resort for those victims, and or the last mechanism, and the ICC is responsible for uh, really rendering justice. Uh, the prosecutor has to be responsible for opening up an investigation and promoting a solution for uh, victims for those victims, and I believe that there's no doubt about Crimes it. Crimes against humanity? Absolutely. Torture is being uh, applied in Venezuela. Uh, uh, our p political uh, prisoners and uh, demonstrators were uh, murdered, uh, and there's no doubt about it. And we, uh, there's no doubt into, insofar as the humanitarian magnitude and repression uh, that is uh, prevailing, and the state 
is or organizing and maintaining this type of uh, procedure. There's no doubt about it. The dictator and the vice president, uh, the head of the Constituent National Assembly, the uh, foreign minister, the interior minister, the head of the intelligence services, uh, we're talking about a uh, chain, an entire chain that was structured so as to uh, maintain people in power using repression as an instrument. And we are now asking, if this is what those countries are asking for, an investigation has to be carried out so as to solve those cases. And this is the very last possibility for those people. They need to gain justice, and they have no um, possibility, no opportunities in Venezuela and won't in the future. International uh, law will make it possible to uh, uh, to, to go, uh, provide a solution. And the ICC will have to jump in in this case and has to make a decision in this respect. Is this uh, an instrument for impunity for the benefit of the uh, dictators, uh, for those uh, torturing people or murdering in, in Venezuela, or is it an instrument for justice? Everybody was vocal about it quite clearly, for example. The report issued by the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. The What's lacking is political will. This has nothing to do with that political will. We're talking about law and justice. The answer is yes. The ICC is responsible for solving this moral dilemma, uh, and uh, the prosecutor is also responsible for this. You went to the border between Colombia and Venezuela, and you made some controversial statements. Uh, you said as regards a military intervention, no possibility must be discarded. That was criticized by countries who are opposed to the Maduro regime. Could you tell us what that was about? We had uh, ample opportunity to be quite specific about it because words were pronounced in a very specific context, and we do not uh, want those words to be inter misinterpreted or interpreted uh, out of the context. We're referring to very clear international legal instruments, uh, such as uh, the responsibility to protect or uh, humanitarian intervention. Uh, the solution uh, in Venezuela. Well, we would like this solution to be a, a based on peace, for peace, through peace, uh, for democracy, through democracy. But the solution in uh, Venezuela cannot be based on inaction. And this is what we've been witnessing for three years. It is necessary for diplomatic, uh, harsher diplomatic solutions to be taken. Military also? Listen, uh, you're cutting me off. Uh, this is not really very courteous because uh, I'm really trying to follow my rationale. Uh, anyway, one cannot uh, deny the Venezuelan people rights emanating from international law, such as uh, the responsibility to protect or responsibility to implement a humanitarian action. Those issues today cannot be denied because of the magnitude, the dimension of the humanitarian crisis, repression, torture, and uh, the number of political prisoners or uh, given the number of people undergoing trial for political reasons. We're talking about over 7,000 people. So uh, for those millions of people that had to flee Venezuela in recent times and the millions that will have to flee the country, we hence need to uh, really clearly uh, take those international legal instruments into consideration. And they can be used in extreme cases when diplomacy fails and when uh, internal state regulations failed, but this right cannot be deny, denied. Uh, uh, this was, those uh, tools were used in other contexts in a less justified fashion. Very briefly, the situation in Nicaragua, a meeting was held on this matter within the Organization of American States for months now. There's been heavy repression. There's talk of measures against uh, Daniel Ortega, talk of a suspension by OAS. What do you think of what's happening in Nicaragua? Is it a repeat of events in Venezuela? 
Not yet, because Ortega has the possibility of backpedaling. This uh, is a much more recent uh, event. This is a political crisis that emerged in April or May of this year. Ortega, we believe, does not need to jump off from the same cliff which Maduro jumped off from, but he is actually doing so when he opted for repressions, increased repression, and uh, he decided to violate human rights in his own country, and this makes a political uh, solution more difficult. But he still has this possibility and has the, uh, the possibility to reinstitutionalize and, re uh, and uh, uh, reinstate democracy in his country. Is dialogue still possible? I'm sorry, what did you say? Is dialogue still possible in Nicaragua? Because it's failed. Of course it is possible. Uh, dialogue did not fail. Uh, dialogue has uh, become useless to Ortega because uh, he uh, uh, cracked down on uh, demonstrators. Uh, dialogue did not fail. What happened is... Uh, once he uh, decided to crack down on uh, the opposition, he uh, believed that it was no longer necessary to uh, carry out political negotiations. Be that as it may, we were referring to uh, uh, the responsibility to protect. This is a tool for peace. Inaction is an instrument for war, uh, violence, death, and desolation. Inaction in the face of torture, inaction in the face of uh, murders and death. I mean, this uh, is a violent a tool for violence, and those are tools for violence which we need to eliminate in the continent. Thank you, Mr. Luis Almagro, and thank you for watching us. Thank you. This was a pleasure to be with you.